Can a woman lead a mafia full of men? Let's find out. When people talk about Maria Licciardi, they describe her in different ways. They say she was charming, calm, very smart, and ruthless. Most importantly, they say she was the leader of the Camorra, the top boss of the Mafia in Naples. The Camorra is like the Napolitan version of the Sicilian Mafia. It gained control of the city after World War II, taking over activities like smuggling weapons and cigarettes. As time went on, they expanded into real estate and drug trafficking. Maria grew up in a family involved in the Camorra, and all her brothers were active members. One of her brothers, Gennaro, the monkey Licciardi, had become the boss and was in charge. Even her husband, Antonio Tecemi, was also a member of the Camorra. So you could say everyone important in Maria Licciardi's life was connected to the Mafia. Maria Licciardi grew up with the traditional role of a wife in the mob world, being loyal, secretive, and taking care of household chores and children. However, as the Italian government cracked down on organized crime, many men were imprisoned or killed, opening up opportunities for women to rise in power within the Camorra. One of the first women to do so was Rosetta Isais Catullo, known for her ruthlessness and leadership. Under her rule, the Camorra's income soared, but she was eventually arrested and convicted only for associating with the Mafia. For Maria Licciardi, it was not an easy rise to power. After the death of her brother Gennaro in prison, she had to wait as other male contenders failed to take control due to being killed or arrested. When her time came, Maria proved herself to other bosses and soldiers. She advocated for peace among rival clans, as the ongoing wars were causing financial losses. Under her leadership, the clans collaborated to expand illegal activities like cigarette smuggling, drug trafficking, and racketeering. Maria Licciardi also involved her family in the prostitution trade, breaking their code of honor. They bought girls from the Albanian Mafia, exploited them on the streets, and kept them on drugs to prevent escape or informants. Additionally, the drug trade became a significant money-making venture for the Camorra, using young drug dealers to sell heroin and cocaine in the Neapolitan suburbs. One police officer says, it's one big web. They constantly change people and locations. The police have a lot of trouble breaking down the Camorra organization. A lot of people who live in these suburbs support the Camorra. Unemployment is high, and one of the main employers is the Camorra. They also provide money for the community. And if all this isn't enough to keep Camorra in place, then fear is. A big portion of the people protects them and works together with them against the police. Italian prosecutor Luigi Bobbio, who went after Licciardi and investigated her, says as soon as a woman takes charge, we can see that emotion plays a lesser part and the organization reaches greater heights. Under Maria Licciardi, the Camorra indeed reached new heights. They became more violent and more secretive. During Licciardi's rule, things were relatively peaceful in the Camorra organization. However, trouble arose when a rival clan disregarded her order and sold a dangerous shipment of unrefined heroin. As a result, drug addicts died, and public and law enforcement scrutiny intensified. The once unified alliance among Camorra clans fell apart leading to wars and over a hundred mobsters being killed. Facing immense pressure from rivals and law enforcement, Maria Licciardi found herself on the 30 most wanted Italians list and went into hiding. Despite being on the run, she continued to lead the Camorra and fight against rival clans and law enforcement. When she felt threatened by prosecutor Luigi Bobbio and his team, she resorted to bombing Bobbio's office as a warning. However, the authorities remained determined to apprehend her. Licciardi seemed untouchable, with Italian authorities having only one photograph of her. They believed she might have undergone plastic surgery or changed her appearance to evade capture. Nevertheless, the pressure persisted, and her hiding place was eventually discovered. On June 14, 2001, the police raided her hideout in a Neapolitan suburb and arrested her. At age 50, Maria Licciardi's reign as boss came to an end. If you enjoyed this story, you should watch how Matteo Messina Denaro was caught.